Hey guys, welcome back. Mike here at MAC Tutorials. Well guys, today I'm going to do a tutorial on studio light setup. Okay, I was talking to a couple of guys on my Facebook page and um, they talked about a tutorial that was out there uh, on how to set up uh, studio lighting. Um, and I decided to kind of do a redo of that. Uh, one, because that one was a, without a audio and two, because I wanted to add some tweaks to it. Okay, so we'll just get started by setting this up. Okay, now in the original video, what they did is, and I'll just uh, quickly show you, uh, they created a cube and right click face, selected these faces. Oops, that's one too much, too many. Hang on, that's better. Okay, so they created something like this, right click object mode, and I'll just quickly go through this because we're not really going to use this okay and then they took this edge right here went to edit mesh and uh, bevel under edge where do you go up there right went into their attribute editor so object mode uh, decreased the fraction a bit increased segments to round that out okay and then right click face take these two faces hit delete and I'll just uh, pull this edge up a little bit okay and then right click object mode edit mesh extrude under face 0.025 okay and then create an object right there and set up lights around it and so forth now, there's one little problem with this method. If I decide to use a reflective material, for example, right click assign the material, MIA underscore X, there we go, material tab, presets, chrome, and replace. So I got a chrome surface right now. I'll just uh, quickly set up some lights, create lights, ambient light, Gonna pull that up. Oh, sorry, wrong light. Excuse me. Lights, area light. There we go. I'm gonna pull that up. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard so I can aim my light at my object. There we go. Let's just uh, check from various angles. Okay, that's about right. And I'll do Control D to duplicate, pull one over here, and Control D once more, and push one back here. Hit seven on my keyboard so I can see my lights. Okay, so if I now were to set it up at this angle right here, okay, and I'll just bookmark this, view bookmark, edit bookmark. And we'll call this new, apply and close. I'll just give my cube a little bit of material. Actually, I did, sorry. Okay. And if I were to render this out, let's check if I'm in mental ray. Mental ray, indirect lighting. And don't mind the settings. I'm going to go through all of this. Okay. Just want to show you something. Okay. So if I, there we go. You have the issue, uh, actually a couple of issues. First of all, you have a really bright light on top, right? And it's highly reflective. And I don't necessarily want that, especially not when I'm working with a uh, reflective material. Second, you have this huge black space right there. Okay, so what is that? The black space is the reflection of anything over here, which is nothing, okay? And I don't really want that. I want it to be, um, I don't want to see that black area there, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get rid of this. Right click object mode, get rid of all of it. And we're gonna do it slightly different. We're gonna take a polygon cylinder. We're gonna pull that out and we're gonna pull that up. Let's do something like this, okay? 
let's give this a little bit more subdivision. Let's do 40. Okay. And uh, let's see. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. Then we're going to move to the top. And we are going to actually set our caps to zero. There we go. Right click face, select the top face and hit delete. Okay. So that will give us this scenario. We're going to right click at the edge, double click on the top edge, raise that up just a little. Okay. And then right click object mode, select our object, edit mesh, extrude under face and do 0 0.025. There we go. We're going to give this some thickness. I'm just going to hit six on my keyboard so we can see what's going on. Uh, let's see, we'll do a white Lambert. So select this object mode, right click, assign new material, Lambert, and we'll do white. And maybe not all white, but close to white. Okay. Now, what we can do is we can take this edge, right click edge, and I kind of thought that would happen. There we go, but no worries. We'll just do it here. Go to edge, drag, select this edge, and deselect these edges. And we're going to go to edit mesh and under edge to bevel. There we go. And then we're going to go right click object mode. We're going to go into our, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where, there he is, poly bevel one. We are going to tweak the fraction a little bit. So let's do, let's say 0 0.6. And we're going to increase segments to smooth that out quite a bit. Maybe even 15. Okay. Right. Okay. So first of all, right now, if we create an object and we render it out, we're going to have the same surface all the way around. So we're not going to see that black reflection. Okay. So let's take another cube and let's uh, pull that up. Right click, assign new material. Let's do the same MIA material, material tab, presets, Chrome and replace. We'll set up lighting again. Create lights and uh, where do you go? Area light. Yep. Pull that up. We are going to hit T on our keyboard so we can aim again and we're going to hit seven so we can see what our light is doing. And we'll just pull this guy back a little and we're going to aim our light at our object. Okay. Now from our top view, we're going to make sure that we aim one light from this angle. Let's make sure it's nice and centered like so. We're going to hit control D to duplicate and then we're going to move it. And as you see, it's automatically still aiming towards where we need to be. Control D once again, and we'll move one into the back and over here. All right. Okay. Let's see if we have a bookmark. That's the old bookmark. Okay. So we'll just, uh, let's see where we're at. Okay. We'll move in to, let's say, this angle here. Set up my resolution gate. Okay, that should be about right. Okay, let's do a quick render. All right, now you can see that the uh, the render doesn't show that black section anymore, and we kind of prevented that by um, setting this shape up in a different way. Now you don't necessarily have to do this round. You could also do this uh, by duplicating the initial shape that I had. So the the vertical wall with the bevel and then do that in the other end as well. But I kind of prefer this way. But now we have the next problem. And that is that in this scenario, you can see that this light is hitting my surface pretty hard, right? I don't really want that. 
Second is I have some issues with these shadows coming from all over the place. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of tweaks here. And actually what I'll do is I'll just uh, save this guy out. Okay, so next what we're going to do is it looks like this bright light on top is created by this guy. So we're going to create a simple plane. And we're going to pull that up. And we're going to move this to the back. Just hit F to zoom in. E to rotate. And we're going to create some indirect lighting on our surface. Okay. Let's see if this guy is big enough. Make sure it is. Not supposed to show up in our scene, but we'll see how that works out. And we're going to take our light. And what we're actually going to do is we are going to reverse it. So we're going to aim it at our plane, like so, and actually do it in an angle. So it's going to shoot up towards the plane and then bounce back. Okay. And to make it more effective, we're going to right click assign new material and let's do a non reflective. So a Lambert and let's make that white. Now just make sure that it is not in our scene. And I still got the old bookmark. We should have made a new one. Okay, as you can see, it's in our scene somewhat. So we're going to have to fix that. That's okay. So we're going to right click, go to edge, take that edge. And we're going to pull that up. And we're going to need to deal with this light back here. So let's see what we can do about that. We can take our light and raise it up and out like so. Okay, that should be good. Okay, first I'm going to bookmark this thing. View bookmark, edit bookmark, and we'll call it uh, bookmark two apply and close and let's give this another render okay i'll actually open my render window and we'll re all right there we go now you can see that um there is uh, quite a difference right you got the very bright light and the not so bright light okay now still we're not there yet um a couple of things first of all this is a chrome material and we're not seeing any reflection whatsoever, right? So, uh, you know, you can't really tell that it's chrome. And what I was talking uh, to the guys on Facebook about is that I prefer to use image based uh, lighting, you know, HDRI images. That's one. Second is we are going to add a little bit of ambient light. Okay. So I'll save this guy out. We're going to go back. We're going to go to create lights ambient light uh, right there and these are typically very very bright so we need to bump that down a lot so we're going to move this guy back give it a little bit of height and we'll do let's say 0 0.15 which is a bit better and we'll give it a little bit of height let's do something like so okay View bookmark bookmark two there we go open our render window and let's re-render here we go all right so let's see if we have any difference here okay this is with ambient light this is without ambient light and this guy is with the bright light hitting on it okay so one more step to go what we're going to do next is we are going to add hdri light or uh, image based lighting, sorry. Okay, just save this out. We're going to go to our render settings and we are going to create image based, image based lighting. I'm going to select a file that I can use. Uh, let's see what do we got. We'll do Arches Great National Park. Okay, and I'll just show you the image. Pretty cool, huh? Okay few back to our bookmark okay open our render window 
This one is saved out. And here we go again, a new render. All right. Now, the thing is, you would probably expect to see uh, arches reflected on this object. And um, the reason why that's not the case is that the uh, HDRI image is used as a light pattern. Okay. Now, the thing is, and I'll show you the difference between the HRI version and the non-HRI version. If we go back one step, this one, to me, looks a little bit dead, okay? It, it, it's not vibrant, it's not alive, it's not real, at least that's my personal opinion, okay? This is with the addition of the uh, HRI image, okay? And now, one last step that I will do to give this a little bit more life, if you will, is we'll save this guy out and we're simply going to add two little objects here so i'm going to create a sphere and we'll pull that up make sure it's sitting on our ground plane so hit four looks okay so we'll take that and we'll move it let's say over here and then we'll take a little, I think it's called a, uh, what is that thing? A polygon cone. There we go. Okay. I don't use those very often. All right. And we'll move that one over, over here. Maybe a bit to the front. Okay. And then we're going to take this guy, assign new material, and we'll do a, uh, Fong E, and we'll make that guy nice and red, and we'll take that one, assign new material, Fong E, and we'll make that one blue. Okay, we're going to go back to our bookmark, bookmark two, there we go. Maybe move this guy in just a little. All right, and we're going to go back to our render window. Make sure this one is saved. I think it is, but we'll just do it to be sure. And let's re-render. And there you go. Okay, so now you can suddenly very clearly see that this cube is chrome, right? And we'll just go back one step. Big, big difference. Okay, so these are just a few tips and tricks that I use and um, you know hopefully these are helpful for you guys uh, I'd love to see what you guys come up with and if you got any uh, great ideas about this I'd love to uh, talk about it and share and learn with you guys on my Facebook page and that said uh, thank you guys for watching and I'd love to see you guys again bye